All right, I'm going to first off by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakah Kadash. All right, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. Call Hello, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakah Kadash. All right, Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the beloved Son of the Heavenly Father, Bahashim Rakah Kadash, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I will give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, all right, and who has taught us this truth. I will give peace, blessings, salutations to the sincere Akim out there that's hoping on the salvation of the Lord, that's that's laboring. All right, Shalom, wa Barakim. All right, unto you. Peace and blessings. All right, Lord's will in this video is edifying. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to read verse 25. It says, and every man that's striving for the mastery is temperate in all things. Okay? And, you know, essentially, you could change that word mastery to, to success. All right? Anyone, everyone that's, 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 shy, that's striving for success, all right? It says they're temperate, meaning you're disciplined. All right? Meaning you, you, you cut off your... Uh, desires okay you cut off your uh desires that don't profit towards your goal okay it says in all things all right for example a person that lifts weights all right they're striving for the mastery meaning they're striving to have a good looking body okay a body that looks good a body that's that's strong that can lift a lot of weight okay but in order for that man to get to that that point, he has to be disciplined. He, he has to eat a certain way. He has to get enough rest. Okay, he has to um, he he has to be strict. Like not only does he have to eat good, he can't eat bad, can't eat junk food. Okay, and the most important thing is when he actually goes in that gym and lift that weight, he has to make sure that muscle he feels the burn, that fire in that muscle, and he has to target pain for that muscle in order for that muscle to grow and for it to uh become that that beautiful muscle that he's striving for it to become all right it says i'm gonna read it again first corinthians 9 and 25 it says and every man that strive for the mastery is tempered in all things okay and we likewise are striving for the masteries all right which is the kingdom of heaven okay we're striving to to be made perfect in the image of Yahweh Bashin Shai to be changed into new spiritual incorruptible bodies, okay? For the laws to be in our inward parts and to make it unto the kingdom of heaven to be saved, okay? So we also have to be temperate in all things, meaning we have to have discipline, man. We have to make sure that we do our videos throughout the week, all right? We have to make sure that we uh, go to camp every week. We got to make sure that we pray, okay? We have to make sure that we sow into the spirit, all right, we gotta make sure that we uh, endure the uh, the fiery trial, okay? Because going through all these things, going through the sufferings, and disciplining yourself is what's gonna lead us to the to the mastery, the true mastery. All right, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, it says now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Now the people of this world that are trying to achieve success. They're doing it for cor for corruptible, okay? Something that's only temporal, okay? Everything that we go through in this knowledge, in this faith, okay, is for incorruptible. Something that 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 doesn't fade away. Something that that uh, doesn't end, okay? It's everlasting. It's eternal. That's why we discipline ourselves, okay? And that's why the truth is way harder. Than anything in this world. If you can uh, make it in this truth, make it in this faith, you can make it in anything in the world. It, it, anything in the world doesn't come into comparison, man. You know? This is the book of Second uh, Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not? All right? Because when you're in this truth, you're not supposed to faint, man. I mean, you're not supposed to get weak, all right? Because the Lord is going to put that, that spiritual fire upon you, and you're not supposed to get weak, man. You're supposed to, you know, 
have, have the proper mind frame, mind frame towards it. Understand that the Lord is doing this for your benefit. You know, understand that the Lord is doing this so that we can be the sons of the Heavenly Father, man. And in order to be the sons of the Heavenly Father, you have to you have to be a certain way. And on, and the only way to get to that certain way is you have to be chastised, you have to be tried, you have to be refined. You see? In 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So though, you know, our outward man is perishing, we're suffering, we're catching all this type of hell. All right, we're being temperate, we're making sure we're doing what we need to do in this faith, in this ministry. Okay, it says the inward man is renewed day by day. Our, our faith grows. All right, our, our, our wisdom grows, our understanding grows, our trust in the Lord grows. Okay, the inward man, the spirit, which is most important, all right, which comes first, that's what's, what's benefiting, that's what's growing. And that's the beautiful thing about being in this truth, man. All right, the whole world, they can't see the elect being uh, made into that precious gold, that precious gold to offer, man. But the Lord is doing it right before their eyes, man. All right, but they can't see it because the Lord is doing it to their spirits, to their souls, man. All right, verse 17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You see that? Because we are in affliction, but the Lord said it's a light affliction. And you got to always keep that in mind. No matter how hard it might seem, the things that you're going through, you have to always understand that the Lord has likened it unto a light affliction, meaning that it's easy, man. All right. The Lord, let me get this real quick. I'm going to continue in 2 Corinthians. This is Matthew 11. I'm going to read verse 28. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, man. All right, because the elect in the world, man, they were, they were worn down, man. Taking L's. And not knowing, you know, like, damn, man, like, why is it like this out here, man? Why can't I never get to where I need to get to, man? I'm tired of this shit. Excuse my Swahili, man. All right, so the Lord, what? He came to the elect that are in that mind frame and gave them this word, man. So the Lord said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And the Lord has given us rest. This knowledge is known, this truth is known as the comforter, man. And the Lord has surely comfort our souls, comfort our spirits, man. Knowing that wickedness is not going to be on the earth forever. Knowing that the Lord is going to establish his righteous kingdom on the planet earth. And knowing that the Lord gave us hope to salvation, man. Because we believe in this. All right, we truly have faith. All right, and if you have faith and you believe in this word, the Lord's not going to forsake you. All right, it says in Sirach 2 that the Lord has never forsaken those that trusted in him, man. You know? Verse 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. See, the Lord's giving us rest, man. But you got to take this yoke, all right? Meaning you got to bound yourself to this word, man. You have to be disciplined, man. You can't stray away, all right? The Lord gives you this word. He gives you this knowledge. He gives you this truth. You have to remain in it, man. That's why the scriptures say constantly abounding in the work of the Lord, all right? You have to constantly be indulging in this word, man. You got to take some chains and, and bound yourself to it. You can't let yourself stray away. Scripture say, enter you in the straight gate, man. All right, because look, because the thing, look, holding this word comes with, 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 with pain, man. If you're going to cleave onto this word, onto this word, if you're going to cleave onto the Lord, that means what? Persecution is going to come your way. The scriptures say, yea, all that live godly in the eye shy shall suffer persecution. So persecution is going to come your way. Temptation is going to come your way. The scriptures say, if you seek the Lord, seek the Lord. You prepare thy soul for temptations, which you're going to get, Lord's willing. All right. You're going, so you're going, you're going, it comes with certain things, man. But if you hold on to it, it says, it says, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You're going to find rest unto your souls, man. You have to remain faithful to the Lord. Okay. No matter what is brought your way, you have to remain faithful to the Lord. You have to have the proper mind frame, the proper perspective, knowing that what the Lord is doing is a, is a wonderful thing. Knowing that the pain and the adversity and the sufferings that you have to endure is going to lead to you becoming a, a son of the Heavenly Father, man, a true Israelite, man. All right. 
And once we're actually sons, we're not going to have to go through this anymore, man. We're going to be able to really just enjoy the fruits of the kingdom of heaven, man. Verse 30, it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's the point, man. The Lord, the, the Lord's uh, yoke is easy and burden is light. The Lord hasn't, he didn't make this uh, ministry rocket science, man. Confusing. It's very simple, man. Teach the word. Study the word. Remain faithful. Treat brothers well. Keep the Lord in all your thoughts, man. It's very simple, man. And it's light. All right, so I'm going to go back to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I read verse 17 again. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. So not only is our affliction light, but it's only temporary. It's only for a moment. You have to remember that the Lord said a thousand, a thousand years to us is only one day to the Heavenly Father. All right. And soon we're going to be living forever, man. Soon we're going to be in that mind frame, man. Where a thousand years is nothing to us, man. So the little bit of time that we've been in this truth, like, say you've been the truth for a year, four years, five years, ten years, twenty years. It's not long when you have the proper perspective towards time. Okay? It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And this is why. You can't always be dwelling on the negative things, all right? You can't always be dwelling on the uh, on the hard things of the scriptures, man. You got to be dwelling on the kingdom, man. You have to dwell on the blessings and the promises that the Lord has promised us. Because the Lord said he's going to work uh, this right here, what we're going through. It worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The Lord is going to put true glory on us, man. All right, he's gonna make our face to actually shine. We're gonna shine like the like the like the stars in the firmament. All right, we're gonna have bodies without blemishes, incorruptible bodies, man. We're gonna be the 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 top rulers, kings and priests, in the kingdom to come. Okay, the whole earth. The scriptures say, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. The whole earth is going to rejoice. Not only the heathen nations. But the animals are going to rejoice. The trees are going to actually rejoice and praise the Lord, man. All right. And we're going to be the top men. All right. Of course, Yahweh Shin Yashai gives all praises and the glory, man. All right. But we're going to be the top men in that nation, in, in that in that kingdom to come, man. The whole earth is going to going to enjoy the earth again through the, the Lord, Yahweh Shin Yashai, setting up his men. The 144,000 ordering them and setting them up to lead the world to come, man. So when you focus and keep your mind fixated towards things of that nature, it makes going through what you're going through in the present much easier. All right. Verse 18, it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we can't keep our mind in the in the now, because what you're going through right now might not be a, a pleasant thing, whatever it is, man. Brothers might be going through a child support. You know what I'm saying? Brothers might uh, might get sick all the time, and they can't get that sick demon. Brothers might have uh, uh, financial issues. They might just barely have enough to get through each day, man. Or don't have enough to get through a day, man. Got to borrow money. Things of that nature, man. Whatever it is, man. All right? It's not... It, it, it's, it's, it doesn't compare, man. It doesn't compare to what we're going to receive. We have to remain faithful, man. That's why the Lord said on to... Said to Paul. When Paul prayed to the Lord to, uh, to remove that thorn from his flesh. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient unto thee, man. I mean, the fact that the Lord woke him up to who he is... And gave him this faith, gave him this wisdom. All right, that's enough. All right, so he had to what suffer? He had to endure, man. And that's what we gotta do. All right, we have to we have to suffer. We have to endure. This is Second Timothy chapter one. Salakia. Uh, this is uh, what is it? Second Thessalonians? No, no, no. First Timothy. First Timothy. 
Whoa, Salakia. Second Timothy three. The second Timothy is three. Wow. Second Timothy is two, man. All right, Salakia. This is Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. It says, "Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahusha." So the Lord said, "Be strong, man." There's, there's another scripture, I believe, in Hebrews. I'm gonna go get it. It's Hebrews chapter ten, verse. Um, let's see. All right, it's not there. Hebrews 12. This is Hebrews 12, verse 12. Okay, matter of fact, since I'm going to read Hebrews 12 and 11, I'm going to read it now. This is the Spirit. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. This is Hebrews 12. We we'll start at verse 6. All right. I'm going to start at verse 5. Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou rebuked of him. All right, so you're not supposed to despise what's going, what you're going through, and you're not supposed to faint. I mean, you're not supposed to get, you're not supposed to just fall out the truth, man. Time and time again, all right, the the Lord allows men to come into this faith. They read uh, Sirach the second chapter. They know that the Lord said, if you're going to seek Him, you're going to suffer temptations. All right, but what? When the Lord starts putting that temptation on that man, he gets faint, man. He falls out the truth, man. He believes, he lets the demons in his head make him believe that he's not going to be able to get through what the Lord put upon him, man. What the scriptures say in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, all right, that the Lord's not going to put anything upon you that you can't bear, man. And he's going to make a way for you to escape. So these are why you got to constantly meditate upon these scriptures. So when you're going through these uh, different Obstacles in your life Are right, you able to actually use them Okay In verse 6 it says For whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth So hey, if the Lord loves you Alright And he requires a high standard for you Because he's making us into his Beloved sons Again Okay the whole earth are going to know us as the beloved sons of the Heavenly Father. All right, what type of... That's beautiful. That's a blessing, man. That's why the scriptures say, what manner, of the, what manner of love had the Lord bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of the Heavenly Father, man. All right? Right now, the whole world calls us, calls us by bywords, man. Calls us by lies, man. Okay? And the whole world, for the most part, don't even believe in the Heavenly Father, man. Hey, but in the world to come, the whole earth is going to know that the heavenly father is, that he is real, that he exists. All right. And we are his actual sons living on the earth, man. And they're going to treat us with respect. They're going to treat us with dignity. Okay. Because they know that our father is the creator of heavens and earth, man. All right. So you got, hey, man, we got to go through this, man. This is Hebrews 12 and 6. It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. It says, If ye endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So hey man, if you're not being chastised, you're not the son of the Lord, man. And we we desire earnestly. Alright, we desire earnestly that we be the sons of the Lord, man. We take pride in the fact that we are that we can now call ourselves Israelites from our perspective tribes. Israel meaning he is a prince of God, man. That's great honor, man. When we first heard that we were Israelites, we were filled with exceeding joy. Okay, well, it was honey to us, man. We have to, we can't forget how, how how precious of a gift the Lord has bestowed upon us by being actual Israelites, man. That's a wonderful gift, man. Verse eight it says. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons, man. And the, and, and the true bastard, the true rejects are the heathens, man. The heathens, they're bastards, man. The Heavenly Father has never dealt with them. He does not care about them. The Holy Scriptures say that they are, they are less than vanity, man. 
okay and they are partakers man because they got the earth right now they're, they're living all right right now and they're, and they're and they're not being chastised for their work all right but the lord is going to destroy them when he comes back man and take them out of power man call hold on y'all about shim y'all shy man so we get the hope and hope in these beautiful prophecies okay verse 9 it says furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh with which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live okay hey man our own fathers man when we were little children used to whip our butts man whip our tails all right when we, when we went off okay to correct so we can be better in his image what he had for us man how much more shall we be in subjection to the father of spirits the creator of all things man and live that's the whole point man the lord is putting us through this so that we can live man the scriptures say he that uh, wandereth out of the way of understanding remaineth in the congregation of the dead man all right the lord has given us understanding so that we can live Verse 10, it says, for verily, for a few days, chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. You see that? The Lord chasten us, okay, that we can be partakers of his holiness, man. The Lord said, be holy, even as your father in heaven is holy, man. The Lord is chastising us so we can be perfect, man. All right, so that we can never go off. Okay, that we can be the, the image of of the heavenly father all right yahweh bashim yahweh shai verse 11 all right the scriptures say he created man and his image man we're going to be perfect in the kingdom to come we're going to do the we're going to fulfill the law statutes and commandments in perfection man all right and that's the whole duty of man scriptures say what's the conclusion of the matter all right matter of fact get that real quick ecclesiastes 12 and 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear the most high and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man self-explanatory the whole duty of man is to please the lord man all right and obviously that's referring to the israelite man i mean really that doesn't even need to be explained man the whole scriptures are are two it was written to israel because it's the word of god and god the heavenly father has never spoken to the other nations man his word is always only on, only been to the nation of israel man all right so this is hebrews 12 so when the when the word in the word if it just says man all right the whole duty of man is to serve the most high it's talking about israelite man these other other nations aren't even worth uh differentiating or, or even acknowledging man they're less than vanity it's hebrews 12 and 11 it says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. And this is the point, man. When you're going through that correction, all right, it's not joyous. All right, you're not going to sit up there and just be laughing, okay? Even though the scriptures say take it cheerfully, all that means is just understand that, hey, man, what you're going through is going to lead to, to greatness. That's why, that's why I always like to compare lifting weights, man. Because when you lift weights... All right, and you get into that last one or two reps that you got to do, and you're starting to feel that burn, man, and you just want to give up. You tell yourself, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it because I know it's going to lead to good results, man. All right? How much more of this truth, man? You go through what you go through, you know it's going to lead to the kingdom of heaven, man. That's the ultimate motivator to push through this adversity, man, even though it's not grievous. So this is Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So it's going to yield the peaceable fruit, man. The peaceable fruit, man. All right. Faith. Okay. Your faith is going to increase, man. You're going to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Nothing is, there's nothing more important than being acceptable in the sight of the Lord, man. All right. Verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And this was the verse I was going to get. All right. It's not time to uh, to be wimpy, man. All right. The scriptures speak against being a wimp, man. All right. The scriptures say, man up, man. Stop crying and, and being a wimp. All right. When you're going through what you're going through, you got to man up. Take what you got, man. 
Know that what? It's gonna make it's gonna get you right, man. The Lord's getting is getting us right, man. Stop being a wimp, man. Alright. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai, man. The Lord has given us grace. Okay? Because we could all be put to death right now for, for the deeds of, of our flesh, man. But through his grace, we're not under the law. All right? We're growing in faith and understanding the Lord is nigh unto us, man. And we're sinners, man. All right? So we got nothing to complain about, man. The Lord said, be strong, man. Be strong in the grace that's in the Lord, man. It says, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. We shall be able to teach others also. So we're supposed to be in this work, man. Constantly teaching this work. Constantly abounding. Verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, man. You got to endure hardness, man. The Lord's going to bring upon you hardship. He's going to bring upon you hard things. Okay? Things that's going to weigh heavy on your mind in the flesh. All right? But what? You have to endure it. Take it like a man, bro. All right, the Lord said we're soldiers, man. We're warriors, man. We're part of the Lord's army that he's building up, man. You got to endure that hardness. Take that hardness like a champion, man. Have a champion mindset, man. All right. Verse 4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. And that's the key. All right. Even though the affairs of this life is going to bring forth, uh, it's going to bring forth hardness, man. The hardness comes, all right, from the from the things of this world, man. Whether it be you know financial hardness that that, that the Lord got you in, all right. Whether it be your women, whether it be your children, okay. The list goes on and on and on, man. All right, but if you're not entangled, all right. If you're constantly in the Word and you're not, that's not the end all be all, all right. This flesh, okay. It said uh, it. It's like I lost my train of thought. Second Timothy two and four says, "No man that warth, all right, which we're in a war, a spiritual war." Ephesians six, entangled himself with the affairs of this life. All right, you're not supposed to get all caught up into this world. The scriptures say, "Be users of the world and not abusers." Man, it says that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier, and a soldier is is, is solitary. Man, all right, he's alone. Man, hey man, as, as soldiers, man, we're not attached to this world, bro. We're completely detached from this world. So the hard decisions that we have to make and the and the and the and the pain that we have to go through in the flesh, so be it. We're doing it so that we may please him who has chosen us, who has called us, and that's our Lord and Savior, man. That's what it's all about. We're proving to the Lord that hey, we're the faithful, man. We're the first fruits of part of the elect. And that's an honorable thing to be a part of, man. So we gotta pray to the Lord that we continue to be a part of this thing. And I'm gonna end it on that. Lord's one, this was an edifying video. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakah Kadash. All right. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to give peace and salutations to the sincere laborers out there. All right. Shalom, shalom.